Suicide Squad is not a 29% bad. I've seen people giving it a 2 out of 10, a 3 out of 10. Like, it's... <laughs> Someone described it as a dumpster fire, and I'm like, no, no, no. It's best described... At... Josh Langland, the horror guru, best described it as a Frankenstein-esque picture. And that's the best way to describe it. Because Warner Brothers, re let me get this right off the bat, Warner Brothers screwed up the editing badly. Like, originally they, they had a uh, first cut that was really, really good, but then they had to do some reshoots, and then they got their hands on it and had to re-edit it, and yeah, this film is really edited badly. But there is charm to it. There is likability like the frankenstein monster yeah it's you know put together it's got all these scars and such but there's more to them and you really like the frankenstein monster and that's the best way to describe suicide squad and if you take anything out of this please go see the movie <laughs> now on to the specifics so it is one year not not one year it is sometime after the events of bvs and i won't spoil yet what happens though the movie does spoil it so be forewarned if you haven't seen bvs um and you're just going into suicide school squad the government well more amanda waller is more worried about you know something like superman or superman s being that won't be so kindly and is gonna you know beat down on everyone so she proposes a Task Force X, a.k.a. the Suicide Squad, to basically go on impossible missions, and, well, if they do well, they get time off their prison sentences. If they don't, they die. They have injections into their neck that blow up, so when Amanda Waller does not want or doesn't like something that's happening, push up a button, boom, your head blows off. And if you've been following the movie, you'll kind of guess who that person is. It's pretty obvious. <laughs> yes, you have Deadshot, played by Will Smith. Harley Quinn, played by Margaret Robbie. Killer Croc. El Diablo. Captain Boomerang, by Jai Courtney. And Slipknot. And what is their mission? Kind of spoilery, and I really don't want to get into it. Like revealing the villain is actually a spoiler even though you know it's set in the film but you know pretty early on but the advertising has pretty much hit it and that's for good and bad because the story is really lackluster and so are the villains in one department if you don't i'll try to be vague as possible as to the villain you know, who the villains are. I, mean, I, I try to keep this spoiler-free as possible. So they go on their mission into Midway City and have to basically, in the end, save the world. I don't even think... <laughs> that's what they all end up doing in the superhero movies. I don't think that's a spoiler. They all end up saving the world. <laughs> even Ant-Man, which is, you know, considered more of a microcosm of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In the end, it's saving the world because he's got to stop, you know, the villains and such. Uh, nothing. So, in with the good. Will Smith as Deadshot surprised plenty of people, and that's <laughs> surprising because he's, you know, first build. He's pretty much the main character, but everyone's like, eh... They were actually thinking more of the surprising members would be the supporting cast. You know, El Diablo and Captain Boomerang. And they are, like, highlights of this film. He brings a humanity to the character of De Deadshot with his Will Smith mannerisms, but still being a likable character. And that's the thing with most of the Suicide Squad. They're really likable. They have this chem... They all have chemistry together. They all have a camaraderie, like... <laughs> You like seeing them work together, and that's why I kind of want to see a sequel, just because I want to see more impossible missions being thrown at them and see how they all deal with it. They don't work well as a team, and pretty much... I I've never read the Suicide Squad comics, but I've seen the Assault on Arkham animated film, and it all and then there, it's like, 
they they work together, but they're not a team if it makes that sense. And you just want to see, and I just want to see more adventures with these characters. Margaret Robbie as Harley Quinn is really fun, really sexy. I'm just gonna stay right, say right out there, she's sexy as all hell. I've read some people get have a problem with that, where it's like, oh, they're over sexualizing her or they're objectifying her, which. Yeah, those are problems that plague female characters in a lot of media, but not Harley Quinn, because I, from the get-go, when she was created for the animated series, she was pretty much as sexualized as you can get for an animated series. That's always been a part of it. And objectifying? No, no, not, not in this movie. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. There's a gif going out there of them filming, and they have the camera on Harley Quinn's ass when she's a going through her little junket of clothes to prep up for the mission that shot's not in the movie they it's more from the front view to be honest but i just have to say that she's sexy as all hell she's one of the main starlight one of the main highlighting points jai courtney almost everything else his talents are really underused except here he says he's an asshole but just a likable asshole as Captain Boomerang. There and <laughs> a lot of people consider the movie this Fox, you know, hot topic, edgy, and I want to say that's mainly in the marketing, somewhat. You know, like it's in, in the film itself and some of the advertisements where it's like Captain Boomerang, blah 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 blah, blah information, fetish pink unicorns it's like for a lot of people that's groaner but <laughs> what do i know i kind of laughed at it <laughs> he kind of carries her out of the film but it's like i'm just gonna carry it <laughs> it's actually a kind of a missed opportunity kind of be vague about it where they see visions i some i read somewhere that someone brought it up it's like wouldn't it be funny if you just had you know captain boomerang cat riding a pink unicorn <laughs> Uh, uh, sorry, just Jai Courtney's really good. He's a great asshole, and he just, like I said, with all the other characters, they work great with one another. Even if you know some of their stories you've kind of seen before, El Diablo, you'll kind of know exactly where it's going when they introduce him. But it doesn't matter because you really like him. You really like the actor who plays him. I do, I do not know. I'm recording this right now, and I don't want to check um insert it right here <laughs> um here but there are also leading the suicide squad is rick flag played by joel kinsman it's on the screen you'll see it um he's i like him he's very much a good sort of i, I want to say typical soldier-esque who works well off of the other suicide squad it's like now I gotta take control of you freaks, and the freaks are, you know, having a lot of fun. <laughs> That's why I really like this movie. I just love the story when the misfits are, you know, having fun and, you know, are the main characters, the camaraderie, as I'm saying. Especially Rick Flagg's relationship with Deadshot, who you could say is the unofficial leader of the Suicide Squad. Uh, another... And that, and that also leads to his second in command. Another name I, I, I totally forgot. I, I'm I'm just bad with names sometimes. Like oddly enough, I can remember. I can't remember her name, but I can remember the name of the villain from Ghost. <laughs> the new Ghost. Ah, uh, uh, the um, the uh, Ninja Lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she's not. She is really poorly introduced. It's like, here she is, you know, she's joining us. It's like, wow. It's like, again, going to the editing, it's like, wow, there must have been a better introduction or a more better way to put her in. And there are definitely likely some scenes cut for her. It's like, she's here and she's with us now and she kind of works off the team well kind of wish i got to have more of her but you know alas plenty of 
I issues. Um, let's get this off the bat with uh, Jared Leto as the Joker. Well, it's not really an issue. More, he's underutilized, and he's they don't utilize the wild card aspect enough. Because I'll get into the whole editing thing, but uh, I, I thought he was okay. Like nothing about him made me actively hate him. I didn't laugh too much at him, but I liked some of the mannerisms he had. I, I liked that he was this kind of gangsta figure. But and there were moments where it's like, oh shit! It's like, but. He, he was just okay to me. Like, I, I really didn't feel like an immense hatred. Like, uh, get this guy off the screen. Get this guy off the screen. Get this guy off the screen. But, yeah, it's like... I, I, I don't... A lot of people were really predicting, like, oh, he's gonna be the really, really bad part. And if you see it that way, yeah, 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 it can be. But I just thought it was like, ah, okay, I just wish they utilized him more. Which gets into the big issue with this movie. Because... Warner Brothers' hands really got into it. Uh, I will go on the record saying I think Man of Steel is a great film, and I can see why others don't think it is, and I, I totally see that. And flaws and all, I really like Batman v Superman. And those first two, two films were Zack Snyder films. And with this and the critical reception and definitely the editing that plagued BVS and definitely here... It makes you realize Zack Snyder is not the problem, or at least not the only problem. I guess that I like both of the two films. It's very much Warner Brothers, who's very, very hands-on. I, I believe it pretty much was um, the reaction to BBS. was like, shit, 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 we gotta get our hands in, we gotta get our hands in, we gotta get our hands in, we gotta make it sure it's... All right. And it can be very messy, like it goes up to... Like, to best, like, some scenes just really, you know, go on long. You know, like, the flashbacks in the beginning with uh, Deadshot and Harley Quinn. It's like, those run a bit longer than I thought they should. And some scenes you can tell, it's like, oh, they had to cut some stuff out. Like, it really doesn't make sense a lot of the time. And the story itself is lackluster. I'm, I'm trying to be vague here, but... A lot of it is very head scratching, and I admittedly had to do to Wikipedia. It's like, all right, all righty, oh, okay, okay. I wish they more clearly said that. Um, and yeah, it's like, yeah, it's not one of the really highlighting points. The highlighting points is the characters and as well as the action. At first, it was very much very close at some shot where it's like kind of hard to see because of you know the darkness, because you know most of the battles are in the city at night but also like because of some editing or well not editing but filters that they do um one where the villain is talking to another villain that's someone early on where it's like the villain's holding the other villain it's like blah 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 blah, blah. I'm, I'm trying to be very spoiler free with this and apparently it's a spoiler <laughs> But you have that, and there, but the filter is like it's really, really hard to see what's going on, you know, a fourth of the time because you know, eventually you do get into focus, like, oh, oh, that's it, but that's really confusing in the beginning. But and the villains just really are pretty one dimensional in that sense, it's like really disappointing, but not disappointing about them. The designs, like, a lot of people kind of joke about what the villain does with hips. I, I, again, I'm trying to be very, very spoiler-free. But the main villain's really, really creepy. Like, the pretty much final showdown between the villain and the Suicide Squad is like, oh, oh, okay, okay, I, I'm not gonna be vague anymore. Sp Spoilers right here, the villain is the Antiantris, and I just have to say that because, oh my god, I have a new crush. Oh my god. Uh, man, fuck the Harley Quinn cosplays coming up. I am so excited for the Enchantress cosplays. Just, goddamn, it's like, a lot of people make fun of hips, but ooh. <laughs> I'm just like, sway the more, sway the more. Oh god, this is getting embarrassing. 
<laughs> embarrassing. And, like, the final fight between her and the Suicide Squad is, like, really creepy. Like, she's down on her legs. She's, like, very just, I, I can't do it because this is audio. It's, like, she's waving her hands around. She's, like, <sighs> she's very much like a witch doctor. And the actress who plays her, I always forget her. It's, like, got her. I think she was in uh, Paper Towns, that John Green film. It's, like, she has that kind of resting bitch face and no offense <laughs> to the actress but she kind of has that face and it also really turns right into being creepy but also hot <laughs> what it has going against it is and it is very much this hatcheted up job that's you know barely held together with a story that's not truly compelling and villains that aren't too well but what makes it are these characters and the action. And, you know, it's humorous. It's funny. And a lot of people complained about that with BVS and Man of Steel. Steel saying, like, oh, it wasn't very, you know, there wasn't much levity. Either in humor or just in feeling hopeful. Or, you know, I can get into that whether I agree with it and disagree with it anyway. But there is humor. And it is funny. And the characters are funny. And you like seeing them together. And that's what makes it and i i do want to call it a good movie because the good aspects just work really well and you know I, I it's not a dumpster fire like like i said at the beginning it's better a frankenstein creation you know it's like something ugly something moldy something very imperfect but there's just some this but other aspects about it just make it work well not make it work well, but make, but make it more fondly remembered. I, I do not think, again, like the critics, I feel were very, very more harsh on it than needs to be. Likely because they're tired of DC, or you know, likely they do feel this immense hatred. But I, I do not even, you know, with my problems, I'd say like, all right, it's worst. It's like a. Five out of ten. Like I, I have it on Letterbox, which you know, and <laughs> shameless plugging right here. It's more of a, you know, six point five, seven out of ten. But seriously, in all seriousness, go see this film. It's really fun. It's really action packed. You do care for the characters. There's and if you liked Man of Steel and you liked BVS, you are definitely going to like this. Like, definitely. If you did not like Man of Steel, if you did not like BVS, still go see it. It's like, there's very much differences to it, but it still feels like it's in the DC universe. Like, I don't want to call it DC's Guardians of the Galaxy because there are elements that are similar but very wildly different about it because it still feels like it's setting up the extended universe. And there is a cameo in this, not the cameo you're thinking of, but another cameo that actually helps build the extended universe more than BVS did, which I, I will say is <laughs> very much a fault with that. That I don't mind the Marfa moment. I like the Marfa moment. The thing with the fucking emails, that, that's comically silly. Oh, God. But this is about Suicide Squad. Just go see it. Go see it. Like, you don't have to necessarily see it full price. Maybe, like, a matinee. Like, uh, you can save for rental. But do go, go see it. I really do. Do recommend it. Recommend it. <laughs> what else do I have to say? Go fucking see it. The suicide is painless. It brings on many changes.